All right, where am I? Oh, it's you guys again. Well, welcome Pokemon people to a brand new Pokemon video. My name is Ruffle Rowlett, and today I want to talk about one of the best Pokemon games ever to exist, and that's going to be Pokemon Emerald. But there are a few things that about 99.4% of the Pokemon fanbase don't know about. So, we're gonna take a look at those today, but maybe you do know some of these, and if so, sit back and look through which ones do you know, and perhaps you may discover some you didn't know. So let's get into the things about Pokemon Emerald you may not have known. Torchic was originally planned to look like this. So this is a prototype Torchic that was found a while back and shows what the original concept for Torchic looked like before they settled for the final classic design. However, that ain't the only prototypes. Here we have a prototype of Latia slash Blaziken of like a fusion that looks kind of strange, but also we have an unused trainer character that was never added riding on top of this creature, and this is found nowhere in the games. Then we also have a very early concept art for Trico that never came to be, which honestly I'm pretty happy with because... Uh, <laughs> this thing looks way too derpy, dog. I mean, look at this. What's going on, bro? What's going on? Also, we have a prototype for Groudon, which just looks very sad, to be honest. Birth Island is a location near Six and Seven Islands in the Sevi Islands, accessible in Pokemon Fire Red, Leaf Green, and of course, Pokemon Emerald. The mythical Pokemon Deoxys dwells on this island, and this place requires quite a few things to actually reach it. First of all, you need the Aurora Ticket through the Mystery Gift, and then you gotta sail there using the SS Tidal. The first thing you find on the island is a triangle which you have to interact with, and then you have to solve a puzzle which makes Deoxys appear. You have to do the following, which is the thing shown here on the screen, which is basically a bunch of like specific inputs that will make the Oxus appear, and of course, it will just be a fantastic Pokemon to have on your team, especially back in those days. Rooftop sales in Lily Cove Department Store is a great place for one-stop shopping in Hoenn. Something most players never encountered was the Lily Cove Department Store rooftop sale. These sales only began after the players defeat the Elite Four, and even at that point, they are kind of held randomly on very rare occasions. Players are at least given like a sort of heads up regarding the time of these sales by actually watching the Pokemon News section, uh, which I think is in the Poke nav. The items actually that are available on the rooftop uh, for sale are usually like things like decorations for the players like secret bases uh, most notably there is actually a board that can be used to cover sinkholes which is pretty awesome uh, now the selection of actual rooftop sales was expanded later on in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Pokemon Alpha Sapphire to include more things and more sales and all that but back in Emerald you only had a few selections of these and this was a very rare occasions that you could actually get these on Route 113 to the right of Falibor Town is a house in which a man will make you items if you bring him ash. Now to collect ash, you gotta walk through the ash-covered grass, then bring it to the glass item maker. Now here's some of the unlockable things. You can get a black flute, which requires you to walk 1,000 steps in the ash, a blue flute, which requires to walk 250 steps in the ash, a pretty chair, which is 6,000 steps, pretty desk is 8,000 steps, red flute, 500 steps, white flute, 1,000 steps, and yellow flute, which is 500 steps in the ash. Hey, before you guys continue, you guys should really subscribe because like 70% to 80% of you guys are not subscribed. So make sure to sub. I mean, what do you say, baby? Should they subscribe? Okay, baby, well, maybe you should calm down and not sound like Madara, but either way, guys, you heard him. You should subscribe. I mean, Baby Yoda said it, so you should probably do it. I'm just saying. You are able to get Chikorita, Cyndaquil, or Totodile when you complete the Pokedex of catching 200 Pokemon of Hoenn. What you gotta do is go to Professor Birch, who will call you on your Pokenav, and he will offer you one of the Johto starters, which is honestly pretty awesome. They also did something similar to this in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, where you can get your hands on the Hoenn starters, which is pretty awesome. In Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, as well as Pokemon Emerald, the developers introduced Phoebus, a derpy looking little fish Pokemon. However, it really did seem like the developers didn't want you to actually find this Pokemon. See, that is because there was only ever like six specific squares out of the hundreds of, you know, the grid squares that existed back in the old Pokemon. And out of these all hundred ones, only six specific ones would be locations where this elusive Pokemon could be caught. To make this even harder, these six squares actually get randomized and picked at random for each individual playthrough. So yeah, basically determined by your ID. To find Phoebus, the player then needs to search the river that runs through Route 119 and then use the best fishing rod to basically fish each square four to five times because basically Phoebus doesn't always show up on the first encounter. So you may need to go through individual squares multiple times, which is honestly insane. But hey, it's maybe worth it for that melodic. So Pokemon Emerald actually has a crazy amount of similarities with Pokemon Platinum. So both are third versions of their respective storylines. Both add a battle frontier in place of the regional battle tower. Both are represented by final members of a legendary trio, which was not confirmed to be part of it beforehand. 
both share features with the remakes of their generation that are not present in originally paired games. Both added the ability to rematch gym leaders after obtaining the national Pokedex, and both allow the players to capture both of the game mascots from the original paired games. So back when Emerald was just releasing, there were various retailers that had a special tin with a Frontier Pass as a pre-order bonus with Pokemon Emerald. Now, what is the Frontier Pass? Well, in Pokemon Emerald, a player could upgrade their trainer card to a Frontier Pass upon reaching the Battle Frontier. The Frontier Pass shows a player's symbols and the battle points, allows the player to view a map of the Battle Frontier, view a record uh, of matched saved like a specific Battle Frontier facility, except for the Battle Pike and Battle Pyramid, or look at the standard trainer card. Now, upon the player's first entry into Hoenn's Battle Frontier, the trainer card will be upgraded into a Frontier Pass by a woman at the entrance. This pass holds the trainer, you know, the trainer card as well as a small map of the Battle Frontier and the player's record with the, you know, Frontier itself. Saved up battle points or BP are also listed, as are any of the seven Frontier symbols the player has won. One battle from within one of the facilities may be recorded and stored in the Frontier Pass as well, which may be watched or overwritten with another one at any sort of time. So yeah, I really wish I would have gotten this like actual real life Frontier Pass as it would have been like an awesome collectible to have, so it was only really available to the people who pre-ordered. After you defeat the Elite Four, go to the upgraded Safari Zone in, well, the Safari Zone, and you can catch some Gold, Silver, and Crystal Pokemon such as Houndor, Apom, Statler, Mareep, Meltank, and even more Pokemon Gold, Silver Pokemon. This is a unlockable, only works like within Pokemon Emerald and not Ruby Sapphire, so a very nice little thing about Emerald that so you may not have known. Before we continue, only about like, I think 10% of people actually leave a like on a video, so if you guys want to see a part 2, I'm going to incentivize you, so press that like button and we'll get a part 2 of this video, so if you want to see that, gotta hit that like button, I mean Baby Yoda said it as well, so definitely do it. The Marine Cave is a special location that only appears in Pokemon Emerald. Unlike the most locations of Pokemon games, the Marine Cave may appear in one of four different routes in the Hoenn region, unlike most other locations. The location of the Marine Cave is never actually set at all. It can be determined by speaking with a man at Hoenn's Weather Institute, who will explain that one of four routes is under abnormal weather conditions. If the player does not reach the Marine Cave fast enough, it will temporarily disappear and the Terra Cave will appear instead. However, once ground on is defeated and caught within the Terra Cave, or if the player did not arrive there fast enough, the Marine Cave will appear and relocate. It appears only on water routes, by the way, in Pokemon Emerald. It is the only place where Kyogre can be caught, and it will only appear once the Hoenn Pokemon League has been defeated, and it will disappear completely after Kyogre has been either caught or defeated. Its counterpart is the Terra Cave, which uh, basically hosts, you know, Groudon, and the two caves cannot appear at the same time. The player must defeat, catch, or not visit one legendary Pokemon before the other cave will appear. Shiny Celebi. So for the sake of consistency and to prevent game crashes if they were hacked into, basically all Pokemon were receiving a shiny variant. As Celebi was only distributed through events, there was never a legitimate way to obtain a shiny Celebi in Pokemon Emerald, making it one of those rare few Pokemon that's impossible to receive in a legit manner besides hacking. Latios and Latias. Now, after defeating the Elite Four, watch the television downstairs in your house. It will ask you what color the Pokemon was, red or blue. Now, after choosing this, you can hunt for Latios or Latias all around the Hoenn region. However, the only way to get the opposite Pokemon of whatever, you know, color you chose is by either trading it or if you got yourself the Eon Ticket. Now, if you do get yourself the Eon Ticket, which honestly you can't because it was an event thing from Nintendo events, uh, but if you do have one, all you gotta do now is go to the southern island, and then boom, you can enter this like little island here, and there is Latios or Latias for you to catch. Mirage Island. So only a very small amount of people ever got to check this place out. Now, see, Mirage Island is a hard-to-reach location in Hoenn, found on Route 130 in Pokemon Ruby Sapphire as well as Pokemon Emerald. Now, it can only be visited under highly rare circumstances, and I really mean highly rare. The island is inhabited by Wild Why Not, which range from level 5 to level 50. Most notably, the island also bears a tree where the one and only Leech Berry is in the game and can be picked. Now, this is the best berry for Pokeblocks, which which will produce gold Pokeblocks, and it can be used as a held item in battles where it will increase the Pokemon's attack in a pinch. 
Every day, a random number between 0 and 65,535 is generated by the game. If this number matches the first two bytes of the personality value of any Pokemon in the player's party, the Mirage Island will appear. Consequently, Mirage Island can be made to disappear and reappear for that day by removing and putting back the matching Pokemon in the party, and Mirage Island will disappear at the end of the day, barring the unlikely outcome of two matching numbers being generated in a row. This makes Mirage Island's appearance even rarer than encountering a shiny Pokemon, although the probability increases with the number of Pokemon the player has. The odds of a single Pokemon activating Mirage Island is 1 in 65,536. This chance is increased to approximately 1 in 10,900 23 if the player has a full party. Now, an old man in the southern, uh, southeastern rather, hut in the Pacific Lodge town will tell the player whether or not he can see the Mirage Island, allowing the player to check if they have a matching Pokemon without having to leave the town. Now, since Mirage uh, Island's number does not change throughout a given day, it is possible for the player to freely move Pokemon between the boxes and the party while attempting to check if any Pokemon in the party actually matches Mirage Island's number. Blue or red tent for your secret base? Hmm, which one would you want? Well, basically, to get either one of these, go to Route 110, go to the Trick Master's house, and complete every challenge he has there. This requires you to basically have Cut and Strength HMs. After doing that, he will say that he has to travel, or he needs to travel, and he will give you the option of getting a red tent or blue tent, and there you go, you got yourself a pretty cool tent you can put inside of your secret bases. So, Pokemon Ramble, the game, uses a faulty implementation of the pseudo-random number generator used in Generation 3 and Generation 4 games, which allows literally identical personality values for a Pokemon even after multiple resets. Now, the game neglects to reseed the PRNG, or as we mentioned, the pseudo-random number generator, on startup, only doing this uh, when the adventure is begun, which means that the personality values of an encounter Pokemon follow a predictable sequence once the seed is found and or forced, which which is kind of a weird oversight, to be frankly honest. Faraway Island is one of the few places that you will never visit unless, well, you hack your game. So what is Faraway Island? Well, I have a whole long video that breaks down what it is and how you get there, as well as mystery surrounding it, which you can check out right here. Uh, but to summarize it, Faraway Island is the only known habitat of the mythical Pokemon Mew within the Pokemon video games. And to get there, you need to get an old sea map and then talk to Mr. Briny, who helps the player, or you, by giving you a return favor of sailing you to the Faraway Island with the ship moored in Lily Cove City. And the issue is though that the old sea map needed to be received through this actual real life event, which doesn't really happen anymore, right? So it was a one time thing and you will never be able to actually visit or get it. Altering Cave is a mysterious cave found in Pokemon Fire Red, Leaf Green, and of course, Pokemon Emerald. Now, only Zubat can be found in it, but it would have actually been possible for the Altering Caves like Wild Pokemon to be altered by using mystery gifts at a wonder spot hosted by Nintendo. Hence its name, right? Being Altering Cave, being able to alter what's inside of it. Despite this though, no country has ever held an event to make the use of this feature in Pokemon Emerald. Uh, the Altering Cave is found on Route 103 on the east bank of the inlet that passes through the center of that route. The entrance of the cave is only open uh, like after the player enters the Hall of Fame and all the unreleased po event Pokemon can be found in the extended area of the Safari Zone in specifically Pokemon Emerald, which we did talk about a bit uh, previously. Um, so yeah, basically you can find those there except for Smurgle, which is found in the Artis Artisan Cave at the Battle Frontier. Now, in addition, the revolutionary lines are all available in Pokemon Colosseum as Shadow Pokemon, which is kind of nice because the connection between GameCube and the Game Boy Game Boy games was really cool. But yeah, after you complete the Elite Four, these Pokemon will appear in the Extended Safari Zone, and the Altering Cave is just kind of there now, uh, not really much happening with it besides there being a bunch of Zubat found in it. The music of Pokemon Emerald. So in addition to the tracks present in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire being in Emerald, uh, which includes the upconverted music from Generation 2, Pokemon Emerald also contains the tracks from Pokemon Fire Red Leaf Green alongside its own. While a few of these themes are used, such as like in the Altering Cave, for example, the vast majority actually go unused, which is unfortunate as if they had actually had the, some sort of option to switch music on a radio of sorts, they could have made for a really great feature and the ability to listen to this music from the other games around it. Pokemon Diploma. So to get one of these, you gotta catch 202 Pokemon in the Pokedex and then go and talk to the game designer at the hotel in Lily Cove City. So just talk to one of the Game Freak devs right there and you get yourself a pretty nice little Pokemon Diploma. 
The Mirage Tower. So yeah, in a previous uh, section, we've actually spoken about Mirage Island, but Mirage Tower is a different thing. Exclusive to Emerald, it is located in the desert of Route 111, and will disappear and reappear as the player visits and leaves the route. Now, the tower itself is a four-story tall uh, building, and at the top floor, it contains either a root fossil and a cloth fossil. I mean, either one you can choose from. Uh, to get to the top, uh, you gotta have yourself a Mac bike and Rock Smash, which are required, and you will mostly just find a bunch of wild sand shrews and trap inch in the tower. However, the whole tower may be a reference to a tower with the same name which appears in Final Fantasy. Both appear in a desert and only appear under certain circumstances and contain a spiral shaped dungeon. Also a fun fact, but a backpacker found in the desert resort in Pokemon Black 2 and Pokemon White 2 actually mentions or references the tower saying the Mirage Tower in a desert of the Hoenn region has disappeared, which is in my opinion a pretty cool little reference. You can get yourself an epic Meowth, so go into the building at the left side of the battle tower, give the woman inside of there a Skitty, and she will give you a Meowth with a Retro Mail. Now, the higher the level of the Skitty you give her, the better the Meowth will be, which means you can basically just give her a better Skitty, and you can get yourself a Persian much, much faster. Now, the Berry Master is a character from the Pokemon games, first appearing in Generation 2, and the Berry Master seems to be an expert in growing and caring for berries, and he distributes them as gifts. Now, in Pokemon Emerald, the Berry Master's wife asks the player about good sayings once per day. She rewards the player with a rare berry when she's told about each of the five special phrases, but will only give a rare berry once for each special phrase. The special phrase, you know, being basically this one, for example, Great Battle gives you the Spell on Berry, Challenge Contest, gives you a Pam Tree Berry. Overwhelming Latios gives you a Watmel Berry. Then we also have Cool Latios, which gives a During Berry, and Super Hustle gives the Baloo Berry. Abandoned Ship. Now, using Dive at the Abandoned Ship in Hoenn at Route 108 is something you definitely should have done. A lot of people, however, didn't, but by doing this, you can access a whole new area of this place, with loads of treasures to be found, like hidden areas with water stones, uh, TM-18, which is Rain Dance, and much, much more can be found actually here. Now, there's actually an extreme way to, like, softlock yourself in Pokemon Emerald, which requires a series of specific things to happen that will cause you to get stuck and unable to proceed further. Actually, the YouTuber Pika Spray Yellow did a whole video about the subject, which I highly recommend, so you should definitely check it out in the link down in the description. Alright, next up is the Trick House. Now, on Route 110, you can find a home unique from any other in the Pokemon games, which is the Trick House. After meeting the owner of the whole place, uh, basically, he will invite you into some of his challenges, right? Most of which feature some gimmicks, a bunch of training to fight and a prize for you know successful completion new challenges are added based on your collection of the gym badges and ultimately defeating the pokemon league when you first enter the house there's usually a twinkle somewhere in the room alerting you to the trick master's presence uh, after finding him enter through the secret door behind the scroll at the back of the house into one of the mysterious chambers which you know simply just features a sort of challenge for you to take on and it will require you to take them on as you kind of progress. There are usually like mail items you can find here and at the end, find the scroll and enter back into the main section of the house to write down the phrase, uh, whatever phrase, and the master will arrive to confer you on his prize. So that's what you can do and as we mentioned kind of previously, there is some cool things you can get from this. Jirachi. Now, the only way to actually get Jirachi in Pokemon Emerald requires this. You need to get a GameCube and then the pre-order version of Pokemon Colosseum. And now you can trade it into Pokemon Emerald. Yeah, doesn't that sound a bit nuts? Like, that requires so many hoops to actually get it. It's kind of incredible. You are able to literally clone Pokemon in Emerald. Now, to do this, here's what you gotta do. First, you must have already beaten the Elite Four and unlocked the Battle Frontier. Then you fly to the Battle Frontier and go to the Battle Tower. And before you can clone your Pokemon, you need to have it in your party already. Now, two. Go to the PC in the Battle Tower and deposit the Pokemon you want to clone. Exit the PC and save the game. Now open the PC again and withdraw the Pokemon you wish to clone. Then go talk to the Link Multi-Battle Room Lady, the one closest to the PC, and tell her, Challenge. Choose the category of the Pokemon to be cloned, level 50 or open level, I don't think it really matters which one you choose. Select two Pokemon, the woman will now say, before entering the Battle Room, your progress must be saved. Is that okay? Say yes. Now you will notice a small time gap. And there you go, you've successfully cloned your Pokemon, and when you see the sentence, would you like to save the game up here, select no, uh, and you know, now you just gotta turn the game off and turn it on again, and you'll find a Pokemon in your party, and the PC as well, and there you go, you've successfully cloned the Pokemon, which is kind of messed up in a sense, but hey, you got it, so what does it matter? Naval Rock is an island between four and five islands in the Savvy Islands, accessible in Pokemon Fire Red, Leaf Green, and of course, Pokemon Emerald. Now, the legendary Pokemon Lugia and Ho-Oh actually roost on this island. Now, 
the only way for you as the player to actually gain access to Naval Rock is by basically downloading the Mystic Ticket through the Mystery Gift option and then basically boarding the SS title in Pokemon Emerald and then sailing all the way over there and catching yourself, well, either one of the two Pokemon, as you will notice, uh, Lugia is basically at the bottom of this whole place, like down there on the lowest floor while ho -Oh dwells in the sky above the island. So that's pretty much all there really is to say. Also, this place does not appear on the Pokenavs map in Emerald, so keep that in mind. You will not be able to actually see where this place is. Prizes from Scott. Now, talk to the character Scott in the house in the Battle Frontier, and he will give you certain decorations or berries depending on your accomplishments in the Battle Frontier. So here's some of the unlockable things. A Golden Shield, which is a decoration, you gotta win 100 battles. A Lancet Berry, which requires you to obtain all the Silver Frontier symbols. A Silver Shield decoration, which requires you to win 50 battles. And a Starf Berry, obtain all the Gold Frontier symbols. That's all, make sure to subscribe, and let's get to a thousand likes for a Platinum video next.